Development is often discriminatory, and in the context of indigenous people, their lives and their rights, this notion has never been more accurate. While the majoritarian Aryan Hindu North Indian society has managed to prosper since the history of time, the original inhabitants of the land, called the Adivasis, have barely thrived. With their lands usurped and livelihoods slashed, they had been reduced to a small geographic expanse to continue their tribal legacies. Situated in the heartland of Chotonagpur Plateau, one of the mineral-rich belts of India, the Oraos are an indigenous group of agriculturists. Contrary to popular beliefs, the Orao tribes were not hostile and opened up to education and modernity with interest and acceptance. It is interesting to note that most Indians in Guana, Trinidad and Suriname are of Orao origin. They say that their politico-judicial system called Parha had inspired the father of Indian freedom struggle, Mahatma Gandhi, to come up with rural local government systems in villages. Called the Panchayati Raj, these systems are widely present today across the length and breadth of rural India. To give a real account of the tribe, its culture and its folklores, and an insider's tale of struggles and identities in an urban space, we have Miss Mera Marcia Topo and her father, Mr. Melvin Probir Topo, who both study and work in Kolkata, West Bengal, but have successfully preserved their tribal heritage and identity. The Oraos, or the Kuruks as they are also called, lived close to the forest areas and traditionally depended on the forest as hunters, gatherers, and were also the protectors of the forest and took up farming for sustenance. Till date, the Orao women still go into the forest to gather tendu leaves which is usually used for making beads, sal leaves for making bowls and plates with twigs. Other plants and mahua flowers and fruits are still gathered. Orao is a scheduled tribe of India who followed the Sarna Dharma or worship of nature. For example, the sun was worshipped as the Dharmesha. Some of the Oraos adopted Christianity when missionaries reached the forest areas and started education. However, even the Christian Oraos celebrate ancient Orao festivals like Sarhul and Karma in the churches. Karma is an annual harvest festival dedicated to the Karam tree, which is worshipped as a deity, god of power and youth. Another annual festival celebrated by the Oraos is called Sarhul. This is a festival to usher in spring when the sal trees grow new leaves to celebrate new life and new birth. Another festival which is celebrated every two years among the Oraos is called the Jani Shikar or Hunting by Women. This festival is to commemorate the ancient women who fought against Sher Shah Suri's army. Our ancestors used to live in Rothasgarh in the Son River Valley, now in Bihar. They remained unconquered for centuries as Oraos were considered fearless fighters. During the time of Sher Shah Suri, when the Orao men were drunk in a festival, an attempt was made to capture Rothasgarh. Our women were alert to the occasion. They gathered together, dressed like men with dhotis and pagadis, picked up bows and arrows and anything that they could find at hand to face the enemy and fought. The enemy, thinking that these were Orao men, 
retreated across the river. The Oraos now live in parts of Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Andamans, and even in Bangladesh. Orao or Kuruk is a scripted and scheduled language similar to Dravidian language spoken among the Oraos. Sadri is a dialect spoken by Oraos to communicate with non Oraos. The ancestors had the foresight to form sub tribes to extend the tribe. Our ancestors asked family male members to bring animals or birds or anything that they liked. For example, the person who brought a tortoise was given the surname of Ikka. The person who brought a bird was given the surname of Toppo. Likewise, a person who brought a tiger was given the surname of Lakhra. The one who brought a fish was named Aind. The one who brought a wild dog was named as Barwa, etc. And etc. The customs did not and still does not allow marriage within the same surname or subtribe to avoid congenital malformations. The food habits of Oraos evolved around the culture of hunting, gathering, fishing and farming. They learned to preserve excess fish and meat by drying it under the sun. They learned to make Hadiya a rice beer by fermenting boiled rice with Ranu which is a yeast made by tribals and comprises of 16 herbs. Another drink which is made is called the Mahua. This is a pure art of distillation from Mahua flowers. And it is a tradition that any guest, a male guest, is always welcomed with a drink, maybe it, a Harya or a Mahua. You would be surprised to know that when a visitor calls, their hands and feet are washed. The water so collected in a utensil is thrown over the roofs of the house to welcome the guests. Traditionally, the Oraos are good hockey players. Hence, you will find a good number of hockey players in the Indian hockey team, be it the men or the women team. The tribals are a fun-loving people who love their food, their music and their dance, the songs and their dance, which is accompanied by the traditional instruments called the mandar, which is a drum instrument slinged across the neck and a nagada. My father, Elias Toppo, was the first member of our family to not only finish his secondary but also his higher secondary education in the village. It would not have been possible without the help of his elder brother and sister-in-law who took a lot of pain not only to save money for my father's education, they did everything that could have been possible to educate my father as their own child. During my father's time, it was a difficult task to come out of the village and study. Social discrimination during his time was almost an accepted thing. On many occasions, they were not allowed to get onto a bus, etc. And they used to walk for miles and miles, but they did not give up the education. After higher secondary, my father came to Calcutta. He did odd jobs. He worked as a clerk in the Survey of India while pursuing graduation in the Knight College. English as a language was a great wall and obstacle to overcome to complete his graduation. He had a tough time to understand the language. Today, I have been working for the last 25 years. I was born and brought up in Calcutta. I have a fan, an AC and all the comforts of life. 
but i am still indebted to my father to his elder brother and his elder sister who gave everything they had to give me a good life today if not for my father's efforts i would still have been a village boy moving around with goats and cows herding them around the forest area cutting trees farming and living the normal life that still so many of our or our brothers and sisters live growing up in a household with mixed cultures is always a little tricky especially when it comes to self identity for me identifying and loving my bengali side was never a big deal i was born and brought up in kolkata and be the bengalis thrive here we thrive here and we love it here and this is our city i was brought up on rabindra sangeet as much as i was brought up doing dance steps to various orau songs uh personally i have never found both my lineages contradicting because there are so many things which are almost the same for the two cultural identities the bengali culture and tribal culture are both extremely proud of their dance and music the difference between the two was just my sense of pride however there were various moments in my life where i was ashamed of being a part of a tribal family it hurt me so much to be ashamed of who i am the major blame for this goes to the fact that people around me did not know what my tribal identity meant i would get various questions about my nationality religion culture etc all of which might seem like they would want to know about me but was only met with jokes and contempt and making me feel even more ashamed and it all boiled down to one single thing i never felt like i belonged media representation played a big role in that the difference in bengali representation and tribal representation is staggering plus the jokes about lower castes and tribals uh, they just never go away my friends even if you ask them now most of them do not still know that i belong to a tribal family because because i never felt like i should mention it to them and this was all because of one girl who questioned my identity and almost made me feel ashamed about it due to the reservation system in india however with time i have come to accept and love my tribal lineage it's never easy especially if you are in a setting where people lack the knowledge and respect for certain identities as i speak i fail to remember who in my family was the first person to complete formal education or when was formal education ushered into my family but the mere thought that my contemporaries are second or third generation of tribals to receive education is both surprising and shocking although education has catapulted them into mainstream indian society for assimilation along the privileged and socially uplifted sadly they are still looked down with questioning eyes and raised eyebrows they are still shackled with discrimination and questions that seek to doubt their identity and belongingness with hostility animosity and stereotypes that prevail and fend off them and their culture we as humans still have a long way to walk to stop the centuries of normalized oppression and enable opportunities of equity towards the oppressed and sufferers of historio-social disadvantage